Well, we're going to look at the simulator that we will use to build some circuits. These circuits will be used in some of the practice and they will also be very handy for you to uh, check and test your knowledge of electric circuits, which is obviously examined in grade 10, 11 and 12 quite extensively. The first thing I would like you to do is to click on voltmeter to make a voltmeter available. It's a digital voltmeter. I can now left click and move it slightly out of the way. The same with its two connectors. Then I would like you to click on ammeter to make a digital ammeter available. It is popped up right down here at the bottom. The next thing I would like us then to do is to keep this on medium. And we're now going to build a little circuit. Now the one that we're going to build, I'm going to show you how to build a circuit with two cells in series. Note that they call them a battery. We know they're called cells until they are connected to each other to form a battery. As always, the little button is positive and the back part of the cell or the bottom shiny part is negative. I'm going to connect two connecting wires. And what I'm doing is I'm actually left clicking on the wire and then I'm dragging it across into this work area. And when I release the left button, it leaves the connector. I can also drag it to make it slightly longer or slightly shorter. I'm going to add another connector over here. I'm now going to click, hold the button in and turn it so that this connector is a vertical one. I'm going to add a switch to this. There's my switch, click, click and turn, release. Another connector, click, drag, release, click and turn. I'm going to do the same down here at the bottom and I'm now going to be adding a resistor. When I add this resistor, I will do exactly the same that I did with the connector earlier. Lastly, in comes the wire. There we go again. And now I'm going to add a light bulb. Adding this light bulb, please note that the light bulb has a connector on the side. And then the other one is right down here at the bottom. The same it would be with a normal little light bulb that would be in a torch. Connector down at the bottom. There's my extra connector. I've stretched it out. And now I'm going to add another connector and complete the circuit. There we go, the connector, and it's all the way down. Oops, I forgot to put in an ammeter. Now I've done this on purpose so that I can show you how to remove one of the components in the circuit. I'm going to right click. It says remove, click, and there we go. The component is now missing. I'm going to put in a shorter connector at the top, turn it around. Then I'm going to add an ammeter. There's the ammeter, turn around, and I can actually just drag this one up, and there we are. I've com completed the circuit. I have therefore got two cells in series, I've got a switch in series, I have a resistor in series as well as a light bulb, and I have a digital ammeter connected. Should I now close the switch, I'm again left clicking and turning the conductor. I'm closing it, and there we can see the light bulb is glowing. At the moment this is a 0 0.9 or 0 0,9 ampere. Please do not use the word amps in South Africa, capital A or ampere, which is flowing and I can see the electrons moving. Now you will note that the electrons are moving out from the negative terminal. This indicates electron current, the way it flows in a metal. Remember that you also work with conventional current, which means on a circuit diagram you would just draw an arrow in. That's merely a convention, a habit. I'm going to open this circuit switch again and I want to adjust the EMF or the EMF of the cells, the total amount of energy that they can provide. I'm moving on to the cell, right click, click on change voltage and I'm changing that to 1.5. I need to use a point because this is American so please use point and click on done. I'm going to do the same with the second one, change voltage. One can also use change it using the slider, but it's much easier and more accurate to type. 1.5 and done. Let's just double check that it has changed. 1.5 correct. And the second cell, 1.5 and correct. Now I'm also going to adjust the resistance of the resistor onto the resistor. Right click change resistance. I'm going to change that to a 2.0 ohms. And lastly, the light bulb. I'm also going to change the resistance to 3.0 ohms. You might have noted when I was at the cells, 
I had the option to change the internal resistance. We're not going to change it. It defaults to zero and we're keeping it that way for our simulations. You could, at a later stage, if you wanted to play around, you could obviously change that as well. The next thing I want to show you is how to connect the voltmeter. I'm going to close the switch so that the current once again flows. You can see that the current has dropped because I have dropped the voltages that were originally here. Now I'm going to connect the voltmeter across the terminals of the battery. And as expected, 3 volts because I have two 1.5 volt cells connected in series. Should I connect this across one of the resistors, there it is across the resistor itself, 1.2 volts. And then the last option, of course, I could also move it to connect it across a light bulb. And that would then give me a different reading, 1,8 volts. You've also now seen again that resistors in series are potential dividers. The 1,2 volt and the 1,8 volt from across the cell, and uh, I beg your pardon, across the light bulb and across the resistor adds up to the 3 volts that we had across the cells. I'm going to move the voltmeter away. Opening the switch, I have to click very carefully on the little lever and open it once again. In order to redo all of this, you can click on Reset All. Reset All Settings. Yes, please. And they're all gone. It's merely kept the voltmeter and the ammeter alive for me, but everything else is gone. Enjoy playing around with the simulator and enjoy your practicals.